VMware is the most popular virtualization platform on the planet. In this video, I'm going to show you how to backup and recover virtual machines in an agentless way with Storeware. Let's start by logging into the Storeware Backup and Recovery console. What you're currently looking at is the dashboard offered by the server component of the Storeware Backup and Recovery. I have one node, so Data Mover, which is going to handle the data protection operations. Now, whenever you would like to add additional source in the Storeware Backup and Recovery, you can go through the configuration wizard. And as you can see, we support wide range of sources. It's our freedom of choice approach. Mm, I can add not only the KVM, etc., but I, you can add vCenter server directly from here in the list or standalone ESXi servers. Both of them obviously need to be licensed. We also support uh, Microsoft 365, generic application um, approach to protect your applications running on everywhere, and storage providers, especially you may be um, considering Ceph, for instance. Nevertheless, this is the one of the places where you may add your hypervisor or manager, and you just need to provide the um, URL access to your vCenter server. We also support a wide range of backup destinations, so you don't have to resign from your um, enterprise-grade legacy systems. Uh, you may just easily integrate uh, Storage Backup and Recovery with Dell, IBM, Veritas, or MicroFocus solutions. Um, if you prefer to use your own storage, you may uh, use file system-based um, storage. Um, also, we support object storage with the S3 or S3 compatible uh, connectors or some other mm, solutions uh, such as Google, Microsoft or, um, or OpenStack object storage, which they are offered in these products. Now, in the virtual environment, I have already my vCenter added here in the hypervisor manager section you can add more uh, for the vmware we actually support two strategies you don't have to select them in the settings in here they are, are automatically selected depending on how you deploy the node you can have the proxy vm approach which uses hot add uh, feature or you may just deploy nodes outside of your um, vmware cluster and in that case you're going to use the NB NBD underneath. I have already a few instances available. So in my case, uh, one of them is already assigned to the policy. Let's invoke on-demand backup. This creates a task or actually creates a workflow execution. So you will have the uh, backup uh, workflow uh, that's, that appears here in the con task console at the bottom of the screen and each workflow consists of several tasks. We, may, we need to export data first and then store in one of your backup providers that you, that you uh, are using, that you, that you have selected in your policy. For VMware, we support change block tracking, so there is no need to keep snapshots on the hypervisor. And there is um, uh, actually, um, it also boosts the overall backup process, so we don't need to export all of this data um, from, from the hypervisor, just the, the chunks that are needed. So export, in my case, took uh, only 33 seconds. Now we, this is the cleanup staging and cleanup, uh, other cleanup tasks that are being performed and obviously the store phase. So um, in this case, I have only one store task, but in the policies, mm, notice that I can specify not only the one uh, backup destination, but also the secondary copy. You, you may want to have backup stored in two locations uh, and policy rules allow you to define such scenario. So they define um, both primary and secondary backup destination, retention settings, and according to which schedules this particular rule needs to be invoked. Obviously, you may want to have multiple rules to have some periodic monthly backup stored in a completely different um, location, and this, is, this can be done with the additional rules. 
For the vCenter, we, we, you may want also to consider automatic policy assignment. You don't want to do that manually all the time. So using tags defined on the uh, vCenter um, or regular expressions, if you have some kind of naming convention used for your virtual machines, you can define rules that allow us to automatically assign only VMs or assign and remove them if the conditions are no longer met. My backup has already been done, so let's go and see um, how the details look like and in invoke the restore. So the restore allows me to specify to which hypervisor I need to, uh, I need to restore the virtual machines. Optionally, I can customize this layout. Uh, or not restore virtual ma machine disk at all if I want to skip specific drive. Um, I can also customize the networking to attach to a different network segments. Uh, if I have multiple adapters, I will have also multiple drop downs in here. And I would like uh, um, to, in my case, to change the VM name. So it's going to be restore, let's say restore2. And this again creates a task. So we need to fetch data from some backup provider. Notice that we support synthetic backup provider as well. So if you have a file system such as XFS that supports uh, RefLink capability, NFS 4.2 can also be used. Uh, we are able to quickly restore data uh, because the data is synthesized. You don't have to merge a complete chain of backups. It also allows us to have forever incremental approach. In the details of my virtual machine, notice that I have few, some charts. Uh, I have the, some backup statistics like backup time. This also helps you to troubleshoot uh, and to see which phase actually takes longer than, uh, than expected. Mm, and uh, at the bottom of the screen, obviously, I have the backup history. I have some snapshots list. I don't have any because I don't need them for the incremental backups. Um, I also have the um, option to exclude the drives from, the, from this place. In the settings view, you can optionally assign the snapshot management policy. So there is additional policy um, that allows you to uh, periodically create snapshots and remove them from the virtual machines um, or execute before and after a snapshot takes place some custom commands in here. Here you can give also optional remote access. We support uh, the both WinRAM and uh, SSH. So if you would like to quiet your database with some custom script, uh, regardless of what is installed inside your, uh, um, your virtual machine, so you don't need to, to have tools installed even for that, we can execute this over command remotely over these two protocols. Now my restore has completed. So let's see in vCenter how my virtual machine uh, where my, my machine resides. Here is my vSphere client. I have connected to my vCenter. And notice that uh, Alpine 1, here is the, the, the VM that I have, uh, I have protect, that I initiate the backup for. And here is the restored virtual machine that we have, uh, that we have successfully restored using backup and recovery. For vCenter, we also support the file level restore capability. Uh, so now if I have such VM, um, let's say I need to find it on the list. I have a button with the folder at here and I'm able to specify on which node I, I would like to mount my backup. And I have three options in here. I can mount file systems automatically. So I will have, for instance, single root file system of a Linux virtual machine guest. Uh, or I can specify file systems to be mounted. Maybe I just want a single partition. Or shared drives over SCSI. So I can expose whole drive over SCSI from this node, which allows me to mount later such volume on the Windows guest, other Windows guest, and restore files preserving um, Windows um, permissions in, in that case. We also support recovery plans and many, many more. So um, 
that summarizes briefly what story ba backup and recovery offers currently for VMware platforms. We have discussed the general backup, incremental backup using CBT, uh, option to file level restore, uh, for file level restore um, and recover individual files or expose them or expose the blog device over the iSCSI. Um, we also have covered the general restore capabilities, uh, option to customize the disk layout or networking. And uh, notice also that we are able to scale. So if you have a bigger environment, we can easily add more nodes to support bigger environments and backup simultaneously um, more virtual machines than I had just shown you today. So thank you for watching. I really encourage you to test it out in your environment and give us some feedback and stay tuned for the other videos.